Welcome inside Maples Pavilion here in Stanford, California. Number two, Stanford and the Lady Balls of Tennessee, two of the winningest programs in college basketball with a combined 11 national championships. And every December they get together as a present for all the Hoops fans out there. Underway at Maples, Tennessee in the orange, home whites for the Cardinal. See Tennessee starting out in a man-to-man -man defense. Look for them in times to put extra pressure on Stanford, try to turn them over. That had, was an issue when they met a season ago. They took out the Hannah jump. The freshman point guard, Helana Lopolo and Cameron Brink, short on the three attempt. Second chance coming for the Cardinal. 10 and one on the year. Their lone loss at home in overtime to unbeaten and number one South Carolina. For the Hall of Fame head coach, Tara Vanderveer, three national championships, including most recently, 2021. And you see the numbers against Tennessee, so many of those against the legendary Pat Summit over the years. Off the bounce and out of bounds. On the other side, it's Kelly Harper who played for Pat at Tennessee, now in her fourth season as the head coach. A winner of three national championships as a starting point guard in Knoxville. It's been a rocky start. A lot of that due to the fact that they have played one of the toughest schedules in the country, all five of their losses to ranked opponents. And the pull-up is good from Jordan Horston. Great start for Jordan Horston. Keep an eye on that matchup, both ends of the floor. She's guarding Haley Jones, Haley Jones guarding Horston. Off the bounce, Jones, the two-time All-American, the spin in the lane. And you saw each of them playing to their strength. Horston with the pull-up jumper, that's where she's really good. Haley Jones putting it on the floor, getting into the paint, using her size. Mid-range, that won't go from Caroline Stripling, and a foul on the rebound will be on Horston. It's a, a bit of lineup in flux for Tennessee. Now there is a look at the starting five for uh, the third game in a row. They will bring Rakia Jackson off the bench. Honorable mention All-American who transferred in from Mississippi State. Trying to lob over the top. Iriapa, and a trip coming to the free throw line. Here's a look at Rakia, hoping that she'll be in soon. Rakia Jackson was a DNP for two games. Coach's decision, you mentioned the last two games, she's been coming off the bench in their most recent game. She came off the bench, but did not get on the floor until midway through the third quarter when we were asking Kelly Harper about that. She kind of <laughs> took time and said it, it has to do with practice and practice habits. So she said we should see, though, Rikia Jackson in this yes. game in the first half. Kiki Uriathan. the misses on the freebies. And now Tennessee the other way. Hosting bothered on the shot. Stanford, one of the top shot-blocking teams in the country. And uh, they have the best defense in the Pac-12 conference. And a foul. Battling for position on the block, Sarah Puckett whistled here. Stanford has such great size, and it helps them have an ability to block shots. And Horston at 6'2 can typically shoot over most defenders, even if they're big players who have switched out on her. But Stanford's size is just at a different level. The polo off the bounce, one-handed, and she'll earn a trip to the free throw line. Foul on Jordan Walker as we welcome in the third member of our crew, Andrea Carter. Well, thanks, Beth. Or Rebecca, you talked about Stanford size and how much trouble that has caused opponents. That is especially important today against Tennessee because they are without their 6'6 center, Tamari Key. Due to blood clotting in her lungs, Tamari announced on Instagram that she will miss the remainder of this season. If you go look at her Instagram post, you will see hundreds of comments from players around the nation expressing their support, including Cameron Brink and Haley Jones of Stanford. I talked to Haley Jones about her support. She said, listen, in the women's basketball community, we absolutely have to stick together. The respect, the care, and the support for Tamari is definitely there, guys.
Dre, it's Mark Gaze, they're anchored on both ends of the floor. Great take by Jordan Horst. You know, she could be an eraser as a shot blocker, which would allow her teammates to exert a little bit extra pressure defensively out on the perimeter. And a player you could go direct entry to, as you see Stanford the last couple times, without Tamari Key in defensively, they have been looking to post up and go to that high-low. Well, Rebecca, I talked to Jordan Horston yesterday about the difference with Tamari Key not being on the floor, and she said the first practice without Tamari Key was a major adjustment. It was almost emotional. Passes you're used to throwing, things you're used to doing on defense, you just can't do anymore because you're right. She is not there to clean things up and make things easier. Well, that also makes this uh, matchup in the paint so much more important. The kick out to puck it for three, and Sarah knocks it down. She has taken over as the starter for Rakia Jackson. She's been playing really well the last few games. She's playing more at the four spot than the three, more comfortable there, but obviously a player who can still stretch the defense. Cameron Brink goes to the right. She and Haley Jones, the two returning All-Americans, the only team in the country that can boast of that. Another look for Puckett, back-to-back -back Jays. Just gives Tennessee so much spacing when they have players who can come down and transition secondary and hit that shot. They talked about the tough schedule. They've started to crank it up a bit the last few games. In fact, they've won three in a row. They're going to get a foul here on the box out against the Cardinal. But they're in a much better mental space and obviously physical as well. Sarah Puckett at 6-2 can extend the defense. You see the closeout a little bit late by Haley Jones, able to drain the three. And then this is created Jordan Horston. Dribble penetration, draw the defense, and then kick it out. So much of what Tennessee gets on the offense then is a is direct result of Horston and her dribble penetration. Horston and Jones matched up there. Brink with the rebound. Inadvertent horn. They'll play through it. So say that's really fast first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Five on the perimeter right now. Fran Bellini was on the court, hand to jump, one of the best three-point shooters in the country. With the miss, Bellini tries to clean it up, tipped to her by Jones. Jump will try again and knock this one down. Hannah Jump shooting over 50% from three so far this season. A player who you cannot give that open look on an offensive board. What's going on with the horn here? They're instructing the teams to go to their corners. I think there's a question about exactly who that one of those fouls was on or who, who is not in the scorebook. Jillian Hollingshed, number 53 in orange, just came into the game. So do, but like, don't you have to wait for a whistle or something? Can, the, can you just hit the horn? I, <laughs> Excuse me, I've got a question. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't inadvertent. It was not it an was inadvertent horn. They were trying to catch it before the last because I would, I would guess there's technical free throws that will be coming up here shortly. She is on our little sheet of paper over here that, that we get before the game, which is, that which is unofficially unofficial. <laughs> <laughs> McCall Murray, Benny Luna, Teresa Turner, our officials. They may have uh, misentered the number as 54, not 53. An inadvertent. Boy, I, I don't know that I've ever seen that in my An administrative years. technical. Yes. So do you still fill out the roster? by hand and somebody accidentally wrote down 54 uh, yeah, instead so. of 53. There's got to be a better system in 2022. You would think. There? <laughs> it might be electronic at this point, but still, they pushed the wrong button. At any rate, it's Hannah Jump to the free throw line, who is a five for five on the season. Senior from San Jose. And then they will go back to just the two free throws. So the inbound here, possession will be with Tennessee. Right now, I just feel bad for whoever's job it Ooh. is on the Tennessee side to 
submit the lineup. Yeah. Maybe they just have bad penmanship. The four <laughs> looks like a three. <laughs> or three looks like a four. Spoken as a person with bad penmanship. That, there you go. And there is Hollingshed blocked on her first shot attempt by Brink. Hollingshed is long, but not as long as Cameron Brink. And she is so good as a shot blocker. Oh. Brink back door. Jones to Brink for two. And that's the thing when Tennessee it comes out with a little bit extra pressure, they're susceptible to back cuts. Beautifully done by Brink. Hollingshed bothered on a second shot attempt by Brink. And Fran Bolivi is working hard. Whichever post has been in the game for Stanford, they're getting on the block and really working, trying to get the basketball. Haley Jones picked up the dribble. Brink goes back door again, missed the layup. And then she's the last one to touch it. Cameron Brink can get it done at both ends of the floor. Don't let the appearance fool you. She is a 6'5", strong athlete. Great job with the block and then cuts back door. Quickness, agility. We see it, Cameron. Welcome back to the Pac-12 on ESPN. Maples Pavilion here at Stanford. Uh, the Pac-12 hosting the SEC. We've got the Cardinal and the Lady Vols. Beth Mullins along with Rebecca Lobo courtside. Andrea Carter is with us here this afternoon as well. Tennessee, as we've talked about, Rebecca, battle-tested with that tough schedule, and they have come in here this afternoon against number two, ready to go. Yeah, this is a Tennessee team that's record doesn't accurately reflect what this team can be come February or come March. They've played a great schedule. They are a talented team, kind of just now finding their groove, finding their substitution pattern, and playing Stanford tight so far in this first quarter. All five of those losses to ranked opponents, they were hanging tight in all five of those games. And for the Stanford Cardinal, national champs a couple of years ago, they were back at the Final Four last season. And with a pair of returning All-Americans amongst the favorites, uh, right now they and South Carolina have separated themselves a little bit. Their only loss was out here to the Gamecocks in overtime. And right now on a 7-0 run, buoyed by an administrative technical foul as uh, Tennessee put the numbers into the scorebook incorrectly. It cost them two points. Will that cost them late in the game? And we get our first look at Rakia Jackson, who has come in off the bench. The honorable mention All-American of Mississippi State. Held ball here, will stay at this end. Rakia Jackson at 6-2, capable of shooting from the perimeter. Really tough off the bounce. Great athlete, can create her own shot. Got some perspiration on the floor. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting, too, to see how they adjust and adapt without Tamari Key, who was having a terrific season out for the year. Uh, this is a team that has relied over the years so much on dominating the paint, on owning the glass, and getting to the rim just like that. There's Jackson. Jump, five points here in the first half. Belibi left unattended. Off the bounce, gets it. And you, you talk about Stanford and South Carolina kind of separating themselves. One of the reasons is the depth that they have, the size and the experience. I mean, Belibi comes in as, as a post player off the bench and can score. Prechtel in as a post player off of the bench. This is just a, a Stanford team that can bring so many different weapons, whether from the starting lineup or off the bench. Got a foul there on the Cardinal. Stripling to the line. The inaugural Jumpman Invitational in Charlotte tips off Tuesday with a top 20 women's matchup. Number seven, North Carolina, and 19th ranked Michigan. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN2 and the app. Cameron Brink returns to the floor for Stanford. 
37 years now with Tara Vanderveer over on that bench. Winning as coach in the women's game, a handful in front of Gino Ariama. A couple years ago, past Tennessee's great Pat Summit, who for a long time stood atop that list. Brink, the face up won't go. Jones grabs the loose ball. Midrange is good from jump. Getting jumped, most of her time is spent outside the three point line, but very capable, of course, of hitting off and pull up as well. Offensive rebound for Horston. Jones defending and commits the foul. And that's going to be number two on Haley. And Jones will have to depart with a pair of fouls here in the first quarter. Replaced by Brooke Dimitri. Brooke Dimitri. She is a terrific three-point shooter. She had five made threes in their last game, but Haley Jones, Jones does so many other things. Gets defensive boards, so good in transition when she can push the pace, gets to the offensive glass as well. You would expect her to be on the bench the rest of this half. Yeah, probably. Boy, she crushed it too last year in their win in Knoxville over Tennessee. 18 points, 19 rebounds, and six assists in that win. Stanford has won the last three meetings. Jump. And now Ashton Prechtel also into the ball game. Dimitri's first look is off. Brink is there on the glass. Stanford has done a really nice job getting to the offensive glass and then capitalizing on it when they do. Top five all time already for Brink in field goal percentage and blocks and she'll take the charge right there. Offensive foul on Jackson. I like the idea though for Jackson. You know Cameron Brink is a player who can be prone to foul trouble and so take it right at her. You have the quickness advantage but how about Brink? Does a great job moving her feet, keeping her hands out of the way. Let's Jackson push off and draws the foul. Really good job by Brink. That's the next step for her in her yep. game, is just staying on the floor, being smarter defensively, not trying to block everything. Got a whistle off the ball, gonna be on Stripling, fighting for a position with Cameron Brink. And into the bonus here in the final minute and a half for Stanford. Second foul on Stripling, she'll depart. Jasmine Franklin, the grad transfer from Missouri State. And a former All-Missouri Valley Conference player coming on. Cameron, one of seven different players through their first 11 games that has been a leading scorer. So they have a lot of different people to turn to. Especially with Haley Jones in the early foul trouble here today. I mean, this is a pretty good first quarter. Six points, six boards. Seven points, six boards. <laughs> Block shot, solid defense, and most importantly, has stayed on the floor. Jasmine Powell also into the ball game. They nearly turned it over. Jackson wants a screen. Gets the switch. Franklin, blocked by Brink. She averages three a game, then gives it away, and bothers another shot, and then commits a foul. And immediately turns to her teammates and say, hey, come on back, we need some help. Of course she does, she blocked the first one, contested the second one. I mean, we said this is an area of growth for her, you can't give her three. So great job, discipline, the first one here. You know, struck, just trying to find a player to give it to. Comes back in, this is a great contest. And then the third one, you just gotta stay disciplined. Cameron's gotta stay disciplined and keep her arms in the air because what happens when she picks up her fir per first foul every game if it's in the first half? There she goes. Yep. <laughs> She's on the bench now. So what was Tyler telling us? You, you don't have to block every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and there she was two for three. <laughs> she almost did. Play the percentages. The lefty Franklin misses the first at the line. And gets 
one or two, kind of substitution. Puckett will come back on. Tennessee, another team with very good size at multiple positions. It really hurts to not have Tamari Key, 6'6", six, six as your anchor, but they still have some good size coming in off the bench and on the wing spot as well. And the Noku has come on for Stanford. So both coaches uh, hitting those benches early. 10 on the shot clock. Lapolo. Going to need a bailout. Belibi gives him a second look, and Horston's got it. And then a reach-in foul is going to be called on Agnes. And while Stanford has depth, if you're Tennessee, you're thinking, all right, Cameron Brink is out right now with one foul. Haley Jones is out with two. Let's make our push. Strong end of the first quarter. You would imagine they'll still be on the bench to start the second. Jordan Horston is the line. Shooting two. So back to the free throw line for Horston. Ever since Horston was a freshman, watching her play at her size and her skill set, you just look at her and think, man, she is a pro. She is a pro. And this year, she has the most efficient numbers she has ever had in her career in terms of from the field and from the three-point line. Short on the shot. Held ball, and it will stay at this end. Stanford can hold for one if they want. Again, Stanford doing a really good job crashing and being active offensively once the shot goes up. Seven offensive rebounds. Doubling up Tennessee in the total boards. Belibi, no. They should have held for last shot. Yeah. Or do this and get the ball back. Get it right back. <laughs> but now I think it might be smart to hold for your last shot. Well, let's see. They got a freshman running the point. Here she is. Lapolo checks that clock, and now we'll back it out. Belibi off the bounce. And a foul with 1.4 seconds to go. We've seen both of these teams run this exact same set. And it's get the ball, elbow entry to one of your bigs, and then have the other big set the screen and, and let her drive. And nice job here by Belibi to get to the free throw line. It's just something that's really difficult to defend. Boy, and that's a tough spot for Jackson to pick up her second foul. And out she goes. With only a second left on the clock, Belibi, the senior out of Centennial, Colorado, to the line, 66%. Both sides have missed seven free throws already. Eight. Missed them both, and that'll do it. 20 to 17, Stanford with the lead over Tennessee when we return, remembering a coaching legend. Then we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, the basketball world lost a legend this week with the passing of Billy Moore at the age of 79. National championship coach, United States Olympic coach, Naismith Hall of Famer, who started out at Cal State Fullerton, then on to UCLA. And then the 1976 Olympic team, the very first time Olymp the, the uh, women's hoops were in the Olympics, Tara Vanderveer. Of course, another Olympic coach, as was Pat Summit. And Tara found this picture in her archives, and they shared it with the world this week, a special bond of both Billy and Pat serving as Olympic team coaches. Reminds me to enjoy every day that we have. And Billy Moore and Pat Summit. Uh, Pat, of course, a player on that team. The legendary Sue Gunner also on that coaching staff. And Billy was a lifelong friend and mentor to Pat when she was in Knoxville. You'd go in for games and often see Billy around practice, around shoot-arounds. It's a pretty incredible photo there. All of the yeah. women who have who paved the way in so many ways for my generation and now this current generation of women, female basketball players. Shout out to a lot of her peers, too. The likes of Kathy Rush, Margaret Wade, Marianne Stanley, Sonja Hogue, Teresa Grants, all those 
coaches who won titles back in the AIAW days. And how about that Olympic roster, Rebecca? As a future Olympian yourself, looking back at that, uh, Ann Myers, Nancy Lieberman, Lucy Harris. Yeah, some of the Giants. Yeah. Horston drops it off for Hollingshed. Another bother on a shot by Brink. Haley Jones is back out yeah, there, by the way, with two me. fouls. So that's a, it was smart for Horston. Yeah. Take it right at her. I would continue to take it right at Haley Jones. See if you can get a third. Rakia Jackson picked up two for Tennessee. She does not come back out to start the second quarter. Brink fouled from behind. Uh, to say she's been a Lady Vol menace may have been an understatement after a 7.7 .7 rebound, couple of block shots, first quarter for Cam. In nine minutes, which is more than the total of minutes she played when they met a season ago because she was in foul trouble. Lapolo on the inbound. Back Tennessee looking for some points on the move. And a pull-up is good from Horston, the so, senior out of Columbus, Ohio. So smooth. She's so smooth off the bounce. 6-2 just rises and finishes. And just comes down, stops on a dime, elevates. 6-2, I mean, facing the basket. We mentioned her efficiency this year from the floor. This, this young woman, the one area Kelly Harper would like to see her get back to is, is rebounding a little bit better. Last year she was at nine a game, this year at six. Here's Horston with the rebound. Hit a thousand points earlier this season. She's got 500 rebounds, close to 400 assists. And the foul on the rebound will go against Hollingshed. Be her first. Franklin, 13 you gotta squeeze back a little bit. Erie Appen with a nice move. And then they're gonna get a foul. On India Navarre, the freshman out of Apex, first North Carolina. McDonald's All-American, seeing her first action today. Don't forget, coming up tonight, another top 20 matchup, Arizona and Baylor on ESPN2. Boy, how strong is the Pac-12 going to be? Five different teams ranked in the top 25, including those Wildcats. Nice move. The tip won't go down. Jones around and out for Hannah Jump. What a great pass though for Haley Jones and that's one of the reasons you want her out on the floor and transition, great vision. Jones takes it right inside and Horston and scores. Oh, fun watching these two go head to head. That's going to be on Brink, just trying to push her way through the Franklin screen, and that is her second foul. These are the ones she can't afford. When you're a shot blocker, if you're going to get fouls, they've all got to be in the paint. They can't be trying to get through the screen. Get around the screen, go under it, but you cannot afford to pick up your second there. Because unlike Haley Jones, who Tara has put back in the game with two, I don't think she'll <laughs> we'll see no. Brink again this half. She fouled out eight times her first two years. Only the one time this season. But Rebecca, they seem to happen in big games. South Carolina, UConn. Big moments. Backdoor jump. Assist, Haley Jones. Puckett steps away and hits. Good start for Sarah. Former Alabama Prep Player of the Year. 
Trying to front. They get the pass over the top. Really Affen. And another assist for Haley Jones. Seen that a couple times, right? High low trying to get the ball into your post player. The Stanford's post players have worked really hard trying to establish position inside. Jones a little bit of everything here. She gets the rebound, head up, the feed, and a missed lay -in. A lot of contact away from the ball on that one. Tennessee clears with Horston. Pocket trail. Got it. Her third of the first half. That's a scouting report miss. They didn't locate the shooter. Such a focus for Tennessee and their transition defense to find their way out to the shooters, and they've done a pretty good job of it. Stanford one for seven from three. Jones. Oh, and on the screen, Horston, I think, took that right in the belly, and she is down. She just ran into the screen as Erie often turned to get it to Jones. There's certainly no foul there. Doesn't mean it hurts any less. Yeah, it runs right into you. Erie often. We're talking about Tennessee doing a pretty good job getting out to the shooters, out to, to Stanford, and that's by design. It's something that they're focusing on, but where they haven't been able to defend efficiently is in the paint. Stanford get doing a great job, whether it's direct entry into their posts or backdoor cuts. Right now, 20 points in the paint mm. for Stanford, 20 of their 30. They are plus eight on the glass. They've been hitting the offensive boards. And now Horston will try and catch her breath over there on the sideline. Passat. Long rebound to Franklin. Howell off the bounce. Jones hanging close to Puckett. Scoop and one! Marta Suarez, the 6th lead sophomore from Spain. Marta Suarez, nice job for the 6th lead player. Drive in just when it looks like there's no real estate. She finds them. Kev, Steph, and Nikki coming up at the half. We will recap a very entertaining game between Florida State and UConn and a big-time return for the Huskies. Steph, how does Stanford unlock Haley Jones here? I think they've been doing it in the first half. You get her on the move. I like when they play off of the elbow. Get her on some back cuts. Post her up against other defenders as well. I think Haley Jones is one of those players, too, that can get on the boards for them. But Brink in foul trouble, you're going to have to have your second lead re rebounder step up. Got some top 10 action at the half. Highlights around the country as well, Beth. All coming up when you join us at the half. Yeah, terrific day of college basketball. Under five to go here in the first half and uh, certainly sending out our best wishes for a speedy recovery for Gio Ariema, who wasn't feeling well this morning, so he did not coach in their win over Florida State. Chris Daly was there on the bench. Aliyah Edwards... A big day, 26 points as they beat FSU and kept that streak alive. Uh, have not lost back-to-back -back games since the 93 season. I remember that well. Mm. Yes, I was on that team. I, I wasn't going to bring it up. I was going to leave, that, back leave to that door open. <laughs> I'm sure a big, big part of the reason it happened was sitting right next to you. Ben. Congrats as well to Indiana. They... Uh, Picked up another big win today, and a blocking foul going to be called on Franklin on the drive. Yeah, it's a multi-screen kind of day, Rebecca. You got Iowa State, Villanova going on right now on ESPN. Notre Dame, Virginia Tech coming up at the top of the hour on the ACC Network.
number one, South Carolina, also a big winner this afternoon. Also got some men's games going on. The inaugural Jumpman Invitational in Charlotte Wednesday, Michigan and North Carolina. Yeah, that looks familiar. That's because they got the same schools, men's and women's teams playing this week. At the Jumpman Invitational, our coverage begins 7 Eastern on ESPN and your app. Got a clock issue I think they're trying to work through. Agnes Emanopu, the junior from Australia with the miss. Take a look at the at the free throw line right now. Lauren Betts in the game for Stanford, and she dwarfs everybody oh, from Tennessee. Yeah, even though Tennessee has players with good size. Lauren Betts at 6'7", and you would, nope, now she comes out of the game. I was expecting Stanford to start, you know, try to take advantage of that and look inside. And, and if you're Tennessee, make it a priority in yeah. this last 435 to pick up another foul on Haley Jones. Yeah, Shake it at her. Number one recruit in the country. Pocket. Off on the three. What you got for us, Andrea Carter? Well, during that last free throw, you saw Haley Jones sort of pull her team together. And just here on the sidelines, she was talking to Coach Tara Vanderveer about exactly what she wanted to relay to the team, the leadership of Haley Jones. You all are talking about her playing with these two fouls, but her communication with Tara and then her ability to relay the message to her team is very obvious. So important. It's so important to have that player on the floor who, who can have that leadership quality, who can convey to the younger players. This is a... A senior who has experienced it all, has won a national championship, who has done it. She's been in the spotlight her whole life, a former high school number one recruit. Was the most outstanding player of that national championship run in the bubble a, a couple of years ago. Off the bounce, Suarez got around Dimitri. And with Haley Johnson. In a little bit of foul trouble, the player she's not guarding, Jordan Horston. <laughs> Has moved off that assignment. Yeah, put her on somebody else. <laughs> Tennessee has tied this thing up. Jones will try from outside. There's a lot of different ways that Haley can affect the game. That The three-point shot has not developed into one of those just yet, no. You would expect her to get there eventually, but it's mm -hmm. going to take some time. Brink continues to sit with the two fouls, and now Tennessee a chance to take the lead here. Well, what a feather in their cap after the rough start. Their worst, by the way, at 7-5 and five since the first days of the Southeastern Conference in the early 80s. If they could come out here and get the dub. You see Tennessee sprinting back, transition defense, getting out to the shooters. Their last priority is actually the ball handling. And Stanford continuing to have success with their bigs, just working hard inside, trying to direct entry into there. Put some fouls on Tennessee as a result. The start of SEC women's basketball in the early 80s, don't at me. I mean, let me clear that up before. <laughs> did, did you just say a, throw a, a don't at a, me? It was a preemptive <laughs> strike. Yes. yes. That's where we're at. That's one of those things that you said it 10 years ago would make absolutely no <laughs> sense at all. Don't at me. Here we happen. Boy, the, the uh, free throw shooting is leaving a bit to be desired. Yeah, they're they're both close. Good. Yeah. Oof. Suarez, boy, she's feeling it. Taking it inside and then missed the gimme. Tennessee's doing a good job of keeping the three-point shooters quiet. And now the pick for Horston. Easy the other way for the lead. Great job by Horston. That was just using her length, active hands. Instead of just having them down by her side defensively, that's what you want to see. And it results in an easy two the other way. Well done. Jones, good post up and a foul. 
Just watch Jordan Harson, 6'2 and long. She's out defensively on the perimeter. Hands active, hands active. Pokes it, able to go the other way and finish. Here it is, here it is, go ahead. I love it, you know, using her length to, to accentuate herself on the defensive end. And then what does Stanford do the other way? They've been posting up their bigs and then they post up Haley Jones and just overpowers her defender to get back to the free throw line to once again miss. All we want for Christmas is a couple of free throws. It's just for either side, just one. Right? <laughs> I thought that was a missed opportunity, though. Horston, believe it or not, they claim she's added five inches to her vertical. I didn't know that was, that was possible. A, that From was a, a year ago. opportunity right there. Oh, that's true. Let's within, see. within just a year, yes. she's added five inches. Crazy. You guys, you talked about Jordan Horston adding five inches to her vertical. She actually told me that her sophomore year, she gained 20 pounds. So last season, she spent the season trying to lose weight and get back in shape. This season in the off season, she got to focus on her explosiveness, wow. her athleticism. She said she feels more strong and more powerful than she ever has before because she's not trying to lose that weight. So Dre, this is my question. Between her sophomore and junior year, when she added that weight, does she like lose three Jordan inches on the vertical? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's still a net plus on the vertical. It's the net plus. All right. It's the net plus. She lost it, she gained it back. Right. Well, she looks terrific. She, she absolutely looks terrific this year. You got two pros on the floor right now in, in terms of assuming they come out. Ready for next year. Yeah, yeah. and now uh, Horston and Haley Jones. I mean, you have more pros than that on the floor, yes. I mean, in this particular draft. Speaking of next year, how about the return of Brittany Griner? She announced this week that uh, now that she's back from Russia, she plans to play in the WNBA this summer in Phoenix. The great, best, great news for the fans. The best part about that is that she feels healthy enough physically yeah. and mentally where she can do that. Polo, 15 on the shot clock. And the final minute of this first half. Very entertaining. Six lead changes, four ties, another backdoor cut for jump. Nice patience by Stanford to wait for that to develop and then hit the cutter. And a travel and a turnover. Let the play develop. You know, part of getting the back door is the initial part. When you have to extend out and get the defense to bite on it before you go back door. That's the thing with Stanford. You want to put pressure on them because they can be prone to turning it over, but then you have to deal with the back door cuts when they don't. Jones. And the switch. Tries to step through. Good defense by Tennessee. Shot clock's off. Two to tie it up at the break. Three for the lead. That's the player whose hands you wanted in. Issues the screen. Tough shot off the window, and Horston gets it to tie it up at the buzzer. A dozen for Jordan Horston, and a big finish for Tennessee. This is the second time this half we've seen her do this. Just make a tough shot using the glass beautifully. Go ahead and flex on us, Jordan. Let's get over to Dre and Coach Tara Vanderveer. Coach, Haley Jones plays that entire second quarter with two fouls. How would you describe her? your trust in her to keep her on the floor? You know, Haley's a very smart player. She, uh, she knows she had two fouls, and she stayed in the game. Uh, we need our whole team playing better defense and not fouling, uh, and also taking better shots. But, uh, you know, we've got a second half, so we need to play better. One for seven from the three-point line, but you're getting work done in the paint. When you say better shots, what are you looking for? You know, on balance, uh, higher percentage, keep going to cam, uh, go inside. Uh, we need our post people finishing. And I, I think 
we're capable three-point shooters, but we have rushed, rushed some three-point shots. Coach, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. 11 points for Hannah Jump to lead the way for Stanford. Horston with 12, and Sarah Puckett with three triples, 11 points for Tennessee. Lady Vols right in the thick of it at the break as we get you to Kevin, Steph, and Nikki. Phenomenal job of limiting that. It was a huge focus for them in practice this week. Underway in the third quarter. Here at Maples Pavilion. Brink immediately gets a touch and a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, you gotta love the set. Give Brink the basketball on the elbow, clear out the right side of the floor and let her go to work. At, well, listed as 6'4", but she is certainly 6'5", has good handles and can put the ball on the floor effectively. So Brink to the free throw line hits on the first, and Sarah Puckett, their three-point specialist, has picked up her third personal foul. And when Kelly Harper told Drea that she was going to go to Rakia Jackson early in the half, she wasn't kidding. She's already at the <laughs> scores table nine seconds in. Here she is. Now she comes on after picking up a couple of fouls in that first half. And what do we see, yeah, what do we see now is Stanford with a little bit of full court pressure. We did not see this at all in the first half. Tara comes out of the locker room and switches it up. Open three, good. Tess Darby, the junior out of Greenfield, Tennessee. Her first bucket, Brink gets into the lane, the spin no. And we're going to have a hell ball situation that will go to Tennessee. Stanford has been so tough to beat here at home. They lost once already to South Carolina, once to Texas last year. One of the best records over the last decade here at Maples. They've won 47 in a row against unranked opponents coming into today's game. Yeah, you got the switch you want. Player who's in foul trouble out on Jordan Horston. We'd like to see Horston take it right out of there, though. Settled for the jump shot. Good ball movement, gets to the other side. Horston with a piece of it, and then the second chance up and in, Iriathan. Yeah, Stanford knows they have the size advantage and will continue to look to get the ball into their post players. Oh, and Brink just picked up her third. That was quick. Just a minute and a half into this third. Keep and your yeah, I was just gonna say, keep your hands up. You're six four, six five. You're a shot blocker. You're not a, you're not a player who's gonna get steals and deflections. Keep those hands in the air. So that one, one is a reach in Rebecca, and the other one was the push on the screen way out away from the basket. And Tennessee takes advantage and takes the lead. Rapolo all the way for the land. Really nice job by Lapolo. You could see her kind of assessing the situation as she drove in. Is the help going to come? Because if it does, I'm going to drop it off. But the help did not. Somehow that one got over Plechtel and a dart right into the basket. Stripling with the bucket. Polo again off the bounce, foul before the shot. Polo driving left, assessing, is the help defense going to come on the screen? Because if it does, then I'll dump it off to Iriafin, but it doesn't. So she finishes, and you're right, <laughs> how does this go in? It almost like she threw it down. But a nice finish nonetheless. Not the arc you usually get on a yeah. shot, but effective. Practice. Oh, she's staying 6'5", but her specialty is out beyond the line as she knocks it in. And that's going to be a bump on Iriathan. 
Hey, our Week 15 Monday Night Football matchup features Aaron Rodgers and the Packers taking on Baker Mayfield and the Rams. Always fun, the night games in December at Lambeau Field. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN and ABC. Both teams in must-win pretty much situation. So Manny Cast is back tonight as well. On ESPN 2. Lapolo caught from behind by Horston. Last couple times down Tennessee offensively, Striplin has used her size to post up inside. So Tara Vanderveer says, I'll see you size and send in 6-7. That's why Lauren Betts is in the game now. Betts had a bit of a, an ankle tweak earlier in the day, so not sure how much we would see her. She played less than a minute, really one play in the first half. The number one recruit in the country coming out of high school last year. Jordan Horston's on 6 7 bets. You've got to get the, the basketball. Off the fake, Haley Jones around, and now Prechtel tips it to himself. And then gets tied up. Jordan Horson is 6'2 and long, but Lauren Betts is 6'7 and strong. This is right there. You have to make that pass. It was really good defense by Striplin, though. She took away Haley Jones' vision to get the ball inside. And the turn on the shot clock. Jones looking for three. No. That's a good foul on the rebound. Good defensive possession for Tennessee because you are very content with Haley Jones yep. taking a three-point shot. She's struggling from there this year, only 15%. Made two on the season. A couple of subs coming on. Hollingshed and Powell back in there for Tennessee as Striplin now has picked up her third personal foul. So each side has a big on the bench. Lopolo, the step back. And another scrap for a loose ball, and this time it'll go to Tennessee. Horston, mid-range over Betts, got it. Yeah, you love it. You, whoever Lauren Betts is guarding, continue to send that player to send the wing on ball screen to Jordan Horston because if Stanford switches, that's in Horston's favor every single time. Betts spins to a right, that won't go down. Powell able to crash. Suarez pulls up for three. Kind of jump each side. Taken away by Tennessee. Darby on the pick, gets the lay-in. As we see Stanford turn the basketball over, that's now seven turnovers for Stanford. Tennessee with three. This is a Tennessee team that struggled early in the season with turnovers, 29 versus Ohio State. In the last two games, they've kept it into in single digits. It's, a, it's huge for them if they can take care of the basketball. Trechtel may have forced that one. Well, the Cardinal are gonna get the ball here under five to go. And a two-point Tennessee lead. A couple times we've seen Tennessee be able to get out, create havoc, turn defense into offense. Another two for Darby. Two-point Tennessee lead under five to go, and the defense, Drea, has looked good for Tennessee. Well, we saw Tennessee's defense in the full court getting out into that layup, but even in the half court, if you watch 
Jordan Horston is playing off of Haley Jones a significant amount. Tennessee is very willing to give up Haley Jones from the three-point line. That entry pass to Lauren Betts cannot happen because of the help side. So you give Tennessee credit for their defense, but also you have to, if you're Stanford, get that alignment. If it's Hannah jump in that corner, that entry pass to the post is a lot easier, Rebecca. Keep Haley Jones out of the corner is the moral of that story. Yeah. Well, the Tennessee defense, I mean, they've got to love this pace. Stanford's field goal percentage is down. Their three-point shooting percentage is down today. And Cameron Brink has been spending more time on the bench than on the court. And so a credit to Tennessee for helping a lot of that happen. And they'll force another turnover. And another jump ball. This has been really wow. scrappy at this end of the floor early here in this third quarter. How many jump balls do we have this third quarter? At I least three. It's, I think it's two, uh, four. Yeah. Four. Let's go back to it. Let's get rid of the arrow and go back to the actual jump ball. I would agree. Can we get one and ones back to you while we're at it? I don't mind the two shots. <laughs> I just, I delight in big little jump balls, like you see in the WNBA or NBA. Mm -hmm. Little point guard against a, your biggest player. I, I find it visually entertaining. <laughs> Kick ball there. And as Tamari Q continues to look on dumb for the year. One of the stars for Tennessee, out injured. And a whistle and a foul. The inaugural Jumpman Invitational going on in Charlotte this week. The women are tipping off Tuesday with Michigan and North Carolina. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN2 and the app. Been a hot start for both of those conferences. A handful of teams high in the rankings. Including Ohio State and Indiana for the Big Ten staying unbeaten. That Virginia Tech-Notre Dame matchup going on right now in the ACC. Virginia Tech with the uh, first quarter lead. Virginia Tech, and that, that's a team that keep your eye on in the ACC as the season goes on. They have experience, they have depth, they have shooters and posts. I keep your eye on Virginia Tech. Four point advantage now for the Lady Vols, their biggest of the day. Jones, mid-range, no. Offensive rebound, Erie Offen. We'll get Haley another look, can't knock it down. Well, this time, Tennessee clears. Blocked by Prechtel. Whistle is jump another jump ball, number five. Huh. Prechtel with the, the block earlier in the play. Not only is she big, she's long. She's got yeah. long arms. I'm going to wear out the lights on that uh, possession arrow clock here in the second half. Under four to go in the third. Jumper is good, Jackson. I feel you, Prechtel. She had to step off because, yeah. you know, Jackson could put the ball on the floor and blow right by, and Jackson saw the cushion she was given and hit the shot instead. Second basket for Rakia, and now an 8-0 run here for Tennessee. Stanford quiet for over four minutes, and an offensive foul called. Third on Erie Offen, so she's got three, and so does Cameron Brink. Talked about the Stanford Post posting up strong all game long. That time here after throwing the elbow. Enough extra to get the foul called. And now Brink will come back on. As will Brooke Dimitri. Yeah. 
Yeah, there you go. You want to get Brink switched on to Jackson. That's going to be favorable for who, for Jackson going at Brink, who has foul trouble. 10-0 run. Took them some time, but they got there. Brink calling for it. Been limited to just 13 minutes in the game. And a foul called on the shot. So much of basketball when you said the on-ball screen is getting the favorable switch, and this is what you wanted. If, if Cameron Brink doesn't have any fouls, it's not necessarily a favorable switch, but she's in foul trouble. You take it at her, try to draw one, or get her stepping away like you did, and Jackson was able to get the good, good look at two. Looking for the first points of the second half for either Brink or Jones. Tennessee has kept them quiet. And that'll end the 10-0 run. Well, foul troubles kept Brink quiet. Mm -hmm. And Abe Opal has a great article on ESPN.com about Cameron and how she's been trying to overcome her foul proneness. Jackson. Off the bounce again and off the window. It makes her so dangerous. 6-2 quickness when she puts the ball on the floor. Ability to get inside and finish around the rim. Brink. Back to the line again. Holland shed with the foul. And if you have Brink in the game with foul trouble, you have to look to get her the ball inside. And that's what Stanford has done the last two possessions. She's in there to score. Eight in her first two seasons, including some foul trouble last year against UConn at the Final Four, and then fouled out in overtime in their loss here against South Carolina. She did have 25 points in that one. But still a work in progress in that regard for the junior out of Beaverton, Oregon. And the free throw woes continue. 12 of 22 now for Stanford from the free throw line. What are they on this season? 75%, yes. Typically, good shooting team. And they're home. Right at Brink again, Cameron holds her ground. You prefer, though, if it's Jackson going at Brink yeah. because she's 6'2". Jones steps through and scores. There you go. Jackson will try for the three. Long rebound to Emanopu. And great job by Emanopu getting through that screen so that Brink did not have to switch. And I'm calling for it. Dimitri. Hollinshed has the board. Connection. Again, gets in the lane because of their ability to go off the bounce. The paint points are almost dead even now. Jones, bumped and fouled. Marta Suarez picks up the foul. But for Stanford, they're, they're just one of their last nine shot attempts. They're getting to the line, but not converting. Not getting stops at the defensive end of the floor, so they haven't been able to get out and yeah any kind of transition to get early looks. Tennessee has played terrific quarter court defense. And then at this other end, Rakia Jackson was a problem when she was yeah. in the game. Played really well. Yeah. They will create for herself. And Jackson will catch her breath over there on the bench. Jones joins Brink and Jump in double digits. 
Off the bounce, right around Grant. Good baseline move, Suarez. Diagonal up screen to get Suarez the ball. I mean, Tennessee almost every possession since Brink came back in has yep. been trying to get pick up another foul on Brink, taking it right at her. Hollingshed steps in front. Short corner, blocked. And that being said, great job by Cameron Brink to not pick up that foul when they've been going at her every time. Shot clock is off here to end the third. Brink for three. Got it. Three, Tennessee as we head to the fourth quarter. Big third quarter for the Lady Balls. Suarez baseline around Brink. And then Cameron steps away for three. And we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Uh, Stanford so good in the early 90s. They won in 1990 the national championship in Knoxville. And then after Tennessee won it in 1991, it was the Cardinal back on top in 1992. And they celebrated that team today. Had a party last night in town. Molly Goodenbauer, Val Whiting and the gang. And then of course, 29 years later, did it again in 2021. Man, it was so much fun to watch those Stanford teams in the early 90s. And Kate Pay and Katie Stetting were on those clubs. They're now on the bench as a couple of Tara, uh, Tara's assistants. Cameron Brink. Boy, what a difference when she's in the game and when Rakia Jackson's in the game for Tennessee. And a similar play that we saw Tennessee run a couple possessions ago. Diagonal up screen, get Cameron Brink the ball. It's how they started the third quarter as well. Get a Cameron Brink a touch in the post. Can she stay out of foul trouble? It's plagued her all day today. Jackson on the drive, or excuse me, Horston on the drive. Can't knock it down. She's got 14. She and Jackson have really been their go-tos all year long. And then Rakia was out for two games due to a coach's decision and now trying to work her way back into the lineup. May be called upon for big minutes here in the fourth quarter. I would expect that's the plan. Yes. As Tennessee tries for its first ranked win of the year, they have five losses, all the ranked opponents, and have tumbled out of the top 25. But you can see there's a talented Tennessee team. And they might have had some struggles early, but watch out for this squad come late January, February. Haley Jones spins in the lane. She's got 13. Cameron Brink has a double-double on the day, and it's a timeout, Tennessee. Haley Jones at 6'2 has the size advantage over Jordan Walker. So what does she do? She goes to it, spins inside. Nice little floater. Look at both huddles as we are underway here in the fourth quarter and a good one. Tennessee took an eight point lead in that third quarter and Stanford has come marching right back. One point differential. Huge difference for Tennessee in the third quarter was the play of Rakia Jackson. She is so good creating for herself off the bounce. She can pull up and hit the mid-range shot. She can take you all the way to the rack, able to finish over players with good size. Eight of her 10 points came in that third quarter. She's back in the game now along with Jordan Horston as Tennessee tries to make this final push. Yeah, she was the leading scorer in the SEC midway through the season last year at Mississippi State and then entered the portal. And arriving in Knoxville, averaging 16 a game this year. They were looking for her inside. Number two in orange. 
Knocked away by Dimitri. Yeah, really good job by Dimitri. Sort of pulling the chair first to get Jackson to go down and then getting a hand on the ball. 47 wins in a row for Stanford against ranked opponents. Uh, unranked, excuse me. Looking to get the lead back. And they do. Cameron Brink. Rebecca, in the last Tennessee huddle, Kelly Harper pointed at Caroline Stripling and said, they are coming right at you with 22. And what did Stanford do? They went right inside to Cameron Brink. Did you see how she pointed for the ball to get swung the right way to get the right angle? The IQ of Cameron Brink on the offensive end definitely shined that possession. And Stripling tried to get to the high side and get around. The help, her help was just a little bit late. Come over for the double and then gets the block. Jump for three. Stanford run. Horston break with another help side block and it's out of bounds to Stanford. How about after the block? Cameron Brink, her dad's right there, hyping each other up a couple possessions ago. Cameron Brink straight up comes over and gets the block without the foul and then we saw it again on the last possession. Jump back to back. Out of bounds to Tennessee. So we saw the block a couple possessions ago, and then the last possession, Brink coming over once again. Her mom and dad sitting baseline. Her dad stood up. She's cheering. All right, Cameron Brink. Well, you see the effect that she can have on both ends of the floor. Jackson with the fade offensive rebound, and in. Jasmine Franklin for two. Great job by Franklin because she's undersized in there and just heart and hustle to get that board and finish. Jones. Frank with another block and then pleasantries between her and Jackson. Brink with the block on Rakia Jackson as she comes over and helps side and then looks at her, says a little something. Jackson says a little something back. Glad the officials didn't call it technical on that. Five blocks now for Brink, one shy of a career high. Stanford numbers, four on one. Dimitri three. Well, four on one, they settle for the outside shot. They're now just four of 15 from outside the arc. Off the pick. Dimitri repositions. That was not a good decision. No. It wasn't a good decision when she looked at it the first time, and it was almost a worse one when she took the dribble to the side. Understand time and score. You've got the four-point lead. Settle in. What's your, what's make the, Tennessee play a little bit defense. What's the heat check minimum these days? you got to make at least three or four in a row, right, before you can heat check it. And at five and a half minutes in a four-point game, yeah. you can't heat check at all. Well, and you got to learn from the South Carolina loss. Tara Vandiver said, hey, we need to take better shots and make better decisions down the stretch. They'll be tested here with that. And approaching five minutes to go in a four-point game. And a lot of that, she was talking about Haley Jones and, and her decision-making and how she has to grow from that South Carolina game. Jump gets in the lane. That was a good decision. A little, a little baseline screen for Jump to curl into the post. 16 now for Hannah. 
And the largest lead for Stanford. Looking for three. Offensive rebound and a foul. That'll be on Dimitri. Stanford on a 16-2 run. They're getting it done on the offensive end. Hand and jump with a monster three, and they're getting it done defensively as well. In particular, Cameron Brink blocking some fools. Thirteen to two advantage for Stanford here in the fourth quarter to turn this thing around. Stanford has been able to get things going on both ends of the floor. Solid defensively, solid offensively, and so much of that is Cameron Brink. We know she can step out and hit threes. It's when she's in the post that she can be so dominant. Blocking shots as well, including this one. And forgive me for the block some fools going to break. That's what we tell our kids when they go play in their high school games. Go block some fools. So no disrespect <laughs> at all to Tennessee. Just a little shout out to my kids at home. And let's check in with Andrea. Well, I was talking to Haley Jones yesterday about Cameron Brink, and she said that Cameron Brink is an absolute monster defensively. She also added, it's not fun in practice going against Cameron Brink. She said in practice, she gets in the paint and she's getting blocked by Lauren Betts, by Kiki, and by Cam. And the question is, where are you coming from? That's how the opponents feel as well. And you know what, Drea, like Haley Jones is so good with her step through move when she gets in the paint, faking and stepping by shot blockers. She's probably honed that skill going against her own teammates in practice. And her plus minus is a 17 today. As you see Greg and Michelle, they're sitting down beneath the, the basket. She's got to stay in games. It's as simple as that for them to have a chance in the NCAA tournament to make another deep run and get back to the Final Four for a third year in a row. And now on the other side for Tennessee, where do you turn? Horston, Rakia Jackson, both in double digits, and Franklin with the missed free throw. They've only scored two points so far in this fourth quarter. Five point game, four and a half to play. Brink able to bury the defender. Cameron back to the free throw line. Don't forget the jump man invitational in Charlotte. On the men's side is coming up on Wednesday. It's Michigan and North Carolina, 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. Brink gets the first. Six of nine now at the free throw line. 19 points, 12 boards, and the five blocks. And she's only played about half the game. Jasmine Powell will return. Tennessee has had success when they've gotten the ball off a of screening action into Jordan Horston's hand and then just set a simple on-ball screen. Get a switch. Yeah, you'll see it here. They're running the Iverson action for her over the top. They held Horston to just two points in the second half as Jackson misses the shot. I just would like to see the ball in Horston's hands. Yeah. Haley Jones, back door. Working it inside, Franklin. Jones with a rebound. And a double-double for Haley at 17 points, 10 boards. Elbow entry into Cameron Brink, and then Haley Jones just works beautifully off of it, puts her hand up, so Brink knows where to pass the ball, and it's so such a luxury to have a tall passer because they can see over the defense and deliver it cleanly. Jones picked, Horston. The 
Tennessee needs right now is a little bit of extra energy on the yep. defensive end of the floor. Active hands, try to get some steals. Go the other way or at least clean up the glass. Franklin fouls Brink on the drive. Seen this a couple times today. First it was active hands in the first half and here again. A nice clean pick by Jordan Horston. Yeah, they need some uh, easy buckets. They're just two of 14 so far in the fourth after that big third quarter where they took an eight point lead and Jasmine Franklin has fouled out. She's held her own. Only four points on the afternoon, but she held her own inside, battled defensively as an undersized big. Just a couple of team fouls apiece so far in the quarter. No jump missed a chance to get it inside the brink. Five on the shot clock, Jones. Tennessee will take that. Good defense from the Lady Vols. Jackson. Brink coming over to help. And then a foul on the rebound. Rakia Jackson driving inside, but in making the defense collapse, when they do collapse, she has to be able to find her players who are open on the perimeter. She's only at one and a half assists a game. That's where Horston, when she dribbles in and penetrates and draws a crowd, she's able to find her teammates. Open at the nail, Dimitri Mill, Brink, offensive rebound and the kick out. And they can work some clock. Jump for three. Break another rebound. Jones drops it off for no crew, missed. And a third offensive rebound for the Cardinal. Tennessee just does not have those bigs in there right now. That's where they are missing Franklin at the moment. Even though she's undersized, she was boxing out and able to get a body on the bigger Stanford players. Haley Jones on the fourth chance of the possession. Away is no good from Puckett. Jones, Brink. Out of her reach. She had beaten everybody up the court. Uh, just out of Cameron Brink's reach. <laughs> 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 Jackson, now time getting short for the Lady Vols. She'll take it to the left side. And a quick timeout. Got to anticipate some pressure coming up. 72-65 Stanford back in a moment. The college football playoff semifinals, Saturday, December 31st on ESPN. Here's the situation now with uh, Stanford on top of Tennessee. Timeouts available. One foul to give for Tennessee. Now you give it. Oh, jump will take the three and hit it. Once Stanford got the ball over half court, you gotta give, give those fouls. They have really struggled from the free throw line today. Now they've missed 10 freebies. And now Brink has the rebound. Go ahead and foul. Oh, oh we're okay. gonna get the steal. Houston fouled on the drive. That'll be the fourth on Cameron. So we see what Tara Vanderveer looks like when they go for the home run pass and it goes out of bounds. What does the bench look like when jump drains the three? Pending. There, that, that, there, there they go. That's what they look like. <laughs> 16 points, 9 rebounds for Jordan Horston today. Again, I would 
consider foul. I mean, as poorly yeah. as Stanford has shot from the free throw line. Well, they're going to get it a second straight turnover. Tar Vanderveer not happy. Well, even if they do get the win, she's talked a lot with her team about handling end of game situations much better. And a young point guard will come out here. Nopu comes in. She's going a little offense defense with her subs right now. There's the sixth block of the ball game for Brink. And it's out of bounds off of Tennessee on the over penetration from Walker. If you're going to over penetrate, you then have to kick for a three. I mean, great job, Cameron Brink going straight up. Ball goes off of Walker. Yeah, in this situation, with you down nine, if you're penetrating, it's because you're looking for a kick yep. for a three. So she has tied her career high with those six blocks. The 17 rebounds ties her season high. In how many minutes? 20, well, 25 yeah. minutes. I mean, in the first half, she only played 11. She averages just under 20 minutes per game. Some of it has been foul trouble, but a lot of it has been just the depth of Stanford and the, the margin of victory against most teams. And with the rim protector in there, look at the difference in the fourth quarter. They've outscored Tennessee 22 to eight. Only three Lady Vol baskets in this fourth quarter. The jump bump for the fourth team foul. So the next one will get Stanford on the line. Can and jump perfect on the season from the free throw line. So Stanford wisely trying to get her the basketball. Mm -hmm. Only seven for seven, but still. Lapolo to the line. So Tennessee here, you need to box out right away, take a timeout, advance the basketball. Substitution here will get the shooters on for Tennessee. Puckett and Darby return, so does Jackson. Just saving their timeouts to advance after this possession. This batch is the largest lead for Stanford. Okay, now they're going to time out in There it is, yeah. Time out call by Tennessee. They will have a couple left. They also have the possession arrow. Puckett hit three threes in the first half. It hasn't hit one in the second. In fact, as a team, Tennessee just won three-pointer in the second half. Well, we talked about the two returning All-Americans from a year ago. They have uh, shown up today, Brink and Jones, and then 19 as well for Hannah Jump. Nice balance for the Stanford Cardinal. And all three of those players do such different things. Hannah Jump, three-point specialist. Haley Jones, dribble create. Cameron Brink, a little bit of everything, but most dangerous when she's inside. Certainly looking for a three-point attempt here from Tennessee. Walker. Jackson. And fouled on the drive. Clock stops with 15.8 to go. So after uh, they had the last two weeks off, for their finals, they, they will actually have two more games to go before the Christmas break. They've got Creighton and Cal. This will be it for Tennessee. They don't play again until after Christmas. 
Tennessee is talented. They're just going to take a little bit more time to, to really gel and find their way, but do not let Tennessee's record fool you. Still trying to figure out that rotation, especially after the loss for the year of Tamari Key. But look at that. I mean, Ohio State, Indiana, Virginia Tech, and now Stanford. That would be four uh, single-digit ranks. UCLA is also in the top ten now. And no bad losses. They weren't, you know, completely blown out in any of these games. Multiple transfers on this roster that are finding their way and the team finding their way with the new pieces. Kelly Harper said her, her team was frustrated early, but their morale has been good of late. They came into this game playing well. They have been able to hang with all those ranked teams they faced including Stanford today. Yeah, you certainly can see glimpses of, of a dangerous Lady Vol squad. Well, especially in an SEC that right now only has the three ranked teams. And I think there are still some questions. It was certainly South Carolina, number one undefeated at, at the tippy top with reigning National Player of the Year, Leah Boston. But then I think a lot of folks are still waiting to see just how good undefeated LSU is. And Arkansas actually got a big win this weekend. A ranked win over Creighton. Hogs are still unbeaten. LSU has looked really, really good, but they have not played a Power 5 conference team yet. So I am eager to see them when they're going yeah. against a little bit stronger competition because they've looked really good so far. Oregon State tonight out in Hawaii, their first Power 5 foe. As time starts to run out, Horston will pull up mid-range and hit it. And that'll do it. Stanford will run out the clock. Clutch defense in this fourth quarter. And then big games from Haley Jones and Cameron Brink. 77 to 70, your final. Cameron Brink has been playing like a first team All-American this season and her game has grown. She continues to be a terrific shot blocker, but a threat facing the basket with her back to the basket and then a loaded Stanford roster. Haley Jones with a big game, Hannah Jump with a big game and then just wave after wave of player that Tara Vanderveer can send in. 11 and one for the Cardinal. Tennessee will drop to seven and six. And Andrea Carter is standing by with Cameron Brink. You all right? How you feel? <laughs> Cameron, you dealt with foul trouble throughout this game, and you still finished with 20 points, 17 rebounds, and you tie a career high with six blocks. How are you able to get it done? You know, just my teammates believing in me. It's simple as that. So, you know, it's fun to come out with them every day, day in and day out. So they're the best. I'm really thankful for them. Well, speaking of your team, you know, they, they're up by eight with a minute left to go in the third quarter, and then you all outscore them by 15 points. In that fourth quarter, what did you feel from the team to pull together and go on that run? Yeah, we really just locked down on defense. We started talking a lot more. I think Brooke came in and gave us some really great minutes. Haley went off, and Hannah Jump's always super reliable. So, you know, I think we just really stepped it up. You mentioned Haley Jones. She had a double-double along with you as well. At one point, you and her scored 15 points in a row for the team. How would you describe her impact? Hey, you know, I love to play with Haley. You know, it's just playing out fun. She makes it fun, and she just she just gets it done. So I'm just super happy with this win. I'm really happy for her. She's a beast. Haley gets it done, and you all got it done today. Cameron, yeah. congratulations. All right, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, the 21 points, 17 boards, the six blocks to lead the way. Cameron Brink, as her parents enjoy the win. 77-70, the final for Rebecca and Andrea and our entire crew. Thanks so much for being with us here at Maples. And so long from Stanford. <laughs>